shadow is taking refuge from the sun. It's mid-morning here in the desert and it's already getting hot. It's getting close to 100. We're on our way back because dogs can't cool as efficiently as human beings. We sweat through our skin. A dog, on the other hand, they can only stay cool through panting. Their tongue is their air conditioner and they also sweat through their paws. Not a lot, but they do, and that helps keep them cool. But it's, uh, it gets too hot out here for a furry little critter that doesn't have sweat glands all over their skin. But he's a smart one. He knows how to find shady spots like this here. I'm gonna get out from under the sun myself. And this very sandstone that I'm underneath at the moment was an ancient seabed. This whole area was an ancient seabed that was thrust up 3,000 feet high. The forces of creation are violent. Tectonic forces that could thrust an ancient seabed up to 3,000 feet above sea level. Winds that whip through the rocks, creating arches. And, and if the tectonic forces, the winds and the rains and the flowing water aren't enough, we have volcanic activity. And you can see there, some 30,000 years ago, this region was volcanic and it was all covered with lava. That lava runs about 30 yards thick. And the basalt, the lava rock is basalt, is harder than sandstone. So as the waters and the rains eroded the sandstone, the lava would break and the boulders from it would roll down. So when you get down to the bottom of these ravines, it's full of weathered basalt. There's a lot of parallels that can be drawn between the forces of nature here and what happens in the nebulae of our galaxy where stars are formed, and planets and creation takes place. Tonight, we're going to go after one of these spectacular nebulae. It's called M16 or the Eagle Nebula. In 1995, NASA made the Eagle Nebula quite famous when the Hubble telescope captured an absolutely spectacular image of columns of space dust and gases that were lit from behind by newborn stars and they gave them the name the Pillars of Creation. But the Pillars of Creation are 10 light years high. 10 light years, the height of the pillars of creation. Enormous condensed pillars and columns of space dust and gases and gravitational forces are, are pulling them together and they'll eventually result in new stars. And when you see those dense clusters like that, that is the beginning of star birth and eventually new stars are born. And then the birth of the new star creates stellar winds that dissipate and the gases and the space dust kind of gets blown out. And eventually you end up with a, a nebula where the center is brilliantly bright and, and packed with new stars and the stellar winds have pushed the gases and space dust around it. Then you end up with more of a rosette nebula type look. The Eagle Nebula is a relatively young nebula in this regards, dating to about 3 million years back. So there's still a lot of uh, beautiful nebulosity throughout it, deep dark veins of, of space dust. It is a, a, an emissions nebula. It's lit from within. It's called an emissions uh, diffuse nebula. And uh, it's just beautiful. So we're going to do our best to capture the iconic pillars of creation as well as the nebula. But I want to get in as close as I can 
realistically. I'm not the Hubble, and I, I've got to go through some atmosphere. I've got a much smaller telescope, but I'm going to use the biggest one I have, see if I can capture as much detail as I can on those iconic pillars of creation. There's also a mystery surrounding the pillars of creation, and that mystery is, do they still exist? Hey, Shadow, say hi to the camera. What do you got? You got stuff all over your head. <laughs> what a character. Well, the Hubble telescope took the now iconic picture of the Pillars of Creation in 1995. A few years after that, the Spitzer Telescope detected what appears to have been the remains of a star that went supernova some roughly seven-ish thousand years ago. And that supernova, is that star that went supernova is behind the Pillars of Creation somewhere around one to 2,000 light years. So the theory, or the hypothesis, I should say, is that possibly the pillars of creation have been significantly eroded, if not outright destroyed, by the powerful stellar winds that would have reached it by now from that star that possibly went supernova. Stellar winds travel slower than the speed of light, so if that is the case, if they've already been destroyed, we won't know it if you run through the math. We won't know it for about another thousand years or so. Now, it's just a, a possibility. There's been a lot of debate about it. We won't know for sure, one way or the other, for about another thousand years. We're gonna be imaging tonight in my light polluted backyard. So I'm gonna be using some very restrictive light pollution filters, which require longer duration sub exposures. And we're going to be imaging with the 1,200 millimeter focal length Newtonian telescope. This was actually designed to go on a different type of a mount, an altitude azimuth mount. And that's great for imaging planets and the moon. But for deep space, it needs to be on an equatorial mount that can account for the field rotation of the Earth. So I put rings on it, and I put it on this, and I've got it down pretty good, and I've got guiding down pretty good. And it is a light bucket. It lets in a tremendous amount of light. And it has amazing magnification. So the idea is I want to go deep into the heart of the Eagle Nebula and capture those beautiful pillars of creation. Shadow, what are you doing? He smells something. We do have foxes that come into our backyard from time to time. He's definitely smelling something. He's, it's 12.30 midnight, and Shadow was on the track of something. <laughs> he never stops. Anyway, we are taking 10-minute sub-exposures tonight, and we now have four stacked 10-minute sub-exposures for a total of 40 minutes of exposure time. And I like what I see so far. I'm going to turn off the light and walk over to the telescope and show you what we have going on. Okay. Here you can see the beautiful Eagle Nebula, 5,700 light years from Earth, and deep in the heart. Those are the pillars of creation right there. These pillars from top to bottom are 10 light years, 10 light years high. They, this is an enormous nebula and it's just rich with dark veins. Let me just, I'm zoomed in a hair right now. Let me zoom back out. And you can just see these dark patches of gases and space dust, including what makes up the pillars of creation. Then the pillars are lit from behind with the light and radiation, brilliant bright light of newborn stars. 
So I'm really happy with the way this is coming along so far. Let me zoom back in a little more this time. Let's try 50%. There we go. Look at that. You know, now you're looking at a GoPro filming a small laptop computer monitor because this is live stacking. This is stacking live before our very eyes. At each exposure, they get stacked. The image just gets richer and clarity gets better. More data to work with. So I'm hoping to get several hours of imaging time in tonight. But I'm happy with what's coming along so far. Really happy. And Shadow is going crazy still. Yeah. <laughs> that dog.